Hi everyone, it's Caroline. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm finally back in my own apartment, which feels so nice. I got the opportunity to be able to go home for Christmas and visit with family and friends, which was lovely, but it meant that I didn't get the opportunity to film all of the end of year content that I wanted to. So that's what you're gonna be seeing from me for the next couple of weeks. I am so excited. I hope that you are as well. Uh, I thought that I would uh, kick it off though with the video that I am least excited to film, which is my most disappointing reads of 2021. I do not think that I have kept it any kind of secret that 2021 was just not it for me in terms of reading. It was probably the worst year of reading that I've ever had. Let's just put it out there right now. Uh, and even thinking about that, I've had a lot of time to think about this. I didn't really read any bad books. I don't think I gave out a single one star. What I did give out a lot of was two and three stars. I felt so average about so many of the books that I read, which is never fun. And it's even less fun when you have books that you're really, really looking forward to and really just thinking that you're going to love and then you just feel meh or averagely about them. So those are the books that I'm going to be talking about today. I feel like I can probably skip over the usual disclaimer or caveat that's usually included in these types of videos because I'm truly not saying that these books are bad. Uh, in fact, when you see some of them, you'll see that they're pretty universally beloved and I thought that I was going to be able to belong to that group of people who loved it, but just for one reason or another, it didn't end up working out for me. So I feel like that works for my disclaimer. Plus, if we all felt the same about all of the books that we read, life would be so boring. And booktube, oh, no one would watch booktube. No one would watch booktube if we just all felt exactly the same about all of the books that we read. But now that that is done and out of the way, I feel like I can finally get started with my most disappointing reads of 2021. I'm gonna start with a book that I didn't necessarily think that I was going to love. I just thought that it was going to be one thing and then it turned out to be something different. That book is In Five Years by Rebecca Surley. This is pitched as an adult contemporary romance. I really don't think that that's what it is. A main storyline, we're following this girl who goes to sleep on the night that she gets engaged to her long-term fiance and that night she has this dream about her life in the future and it's completely unlike anything she could have ever imagined. One of the main things being that she is engaged or married to this man that she has never met before. She wakes up, lives her life out, and then you can probably guess five years in the future, she meets this man. I think my, well, I know that my main issue with this book is there is a plot point that gets introduced that isn't found on any synopsis. And uh, I feel, I know that it was intentionally withheld. And uh, I feel like the publisher might have done that intentionally because they were trying to make it this impactful, powerful moment. But because of what the plot point was, I just found it kind of cheap and gimmicky. And that is really all I can say without spoiling the book, which I hate that it's even a spoiler to begin with, but I'm gonna put a spoiler something somewhere on the screen. So if you don't wanna be spoiled for this, scrub through until you no longer see whatever it is that's up on the screen. Okay, here we go. The plot point that I guess is my main issue with this book is that when the main character meets this man from her dreams, it's because her best friend is dating him. Now that alone isn't enough to upset me or annoy me or make me disappointed. In fact, that's what I thought that the rest of the book was gonna be about. I was like, okay, here's the conflict. Here's what's gonna happen. But no, we find out a little bit ways down the line that her friend has ovarian cancer and the plot completely flips to be about that, about this main character witnessing her best friend go through this really traumatic, battling this traumatic terminal illness and then eventually succumbing to that illness. And I, I don't know, I just don't like that that is a plot point that is withheld 
with the intention of it being powerful or impactful. I don't see terminal illness as something that should be used in that way. Even if the author was trying to make a point about, I don't even know, like maybe grief and how people may grieve in different ways, I don't think that necessarily that she accomplished that either. Like, for example, at the end of the book, the main character, after her best friend has died from her cancer, the main character ends up sleeping with that guy that ended up marrying her best friend. Uh, so he's a widow, basically. Uh, they sleep together and then essentially laugh it off and then the book ends. So uh, I guess I just don't really see I didn't see the point and not that every single book has to have a point but I feel like the author was trying to make one and it just missed the mark. Okay my next disappointing read of 2021 is a book that I unlike my last one I thought I was going to love this book and then kind of for similar reasons to in five years. I ended up not loving it. So the book is The Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. This is a young adult, gritty, contemporary. It focuses on these three teenagers that are all best friends. They're all in their senior year, so we have that kind of existential dread going on about them not wanting to leave their small town or you know one character does want to leave and so there's conflict about that and just kind of about identity and who they are and who they want to be in the future. and. The book does follow through on that promise. This was my first Jeff Zentner, and uh, there is a very specific type of reader that loves Jeff Zentner, and I thought I was going to be that type of reader. His writing, he gets praised for his writing a lot, which I personally found it to be very overwritten, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I, a lot of my favorite books um, are overwritten and I do like overwritten dialogue and character interactions and things like that. I just kind of feel like the group of people that does love Jeff Zentner doesn't think that his writing is overwritten. That, that aside, that doesn't really matter because it doesn't necessarily bother me. Um, uh, what does bother me with this book is that, again, there is a plot point that happens very late in this book that I don't feel was handled well, especially considering when it is a book that is written for young adults. Then I find myself in a place where I kind of need to spoil the book in order to further explain myself. So again, look for that spoiler thing wherever it's going to be. And if you don't want to be spoiled for it, then just skip on through until you don't see it anymore. Okay, I'm assuming if you're still here, it's because you, you don't mind being spoiled, which I hate, again, that this is even a spoiler in the first place. So from the very beginning, we have this group of friends. Two of them, a boy and a girl, are very much like mutual pining, have feelings for each other, but don't want to admit it to one another. And then there's this other friend that even though he's a main character, he has like his own perspective. The way that Jeff Zentner wrote it, it's almost kind of like he's the side character to these two characters that have this kind of love thing going on. And I actually really, really loved this character. I thought he was so caring and empathetic and Jeff Zentner really endeared you to him and then about three quarters of the way through the book this teenage character gets shot and it's senseless and it's violent and it, there is no build up to it you can very much tell in the way that it is written that jeff center wanted you to be shocked by it again i think his intention was for it to be very very powerful i found it very very shocking but then i was very upset by it just because I don't think that you should use the senseless like killing of a teenager as a powerful plot point that your plot kind of hinges on. And then that would be one thing but the two other characters, this character that dies, his so-called best friends don't grieve pretty much at all for their friend. The last quarter of the book, instead of focusing on their grief, um, Jeff Zentner focuses on them admitting their feelings to one another and then getting into a relationship. So if Jeff Zentner wanted the romance to be the focus, that's completely fine, but then either don't write in that character, and then if you do write in the character, don't intentionally endear your audience to them just to 
kill them off I don't know I'm sure that here's the thing I'm sure that I have favorite books where similar situations like this happen but just the way that it was handled in this one I really I didn't appreciate it and I didn't like it okay I promise that's the last time I'm gonna need to spoil a book in order to explain my disappointment in it the rest of the books I could explain my disappointment just fine without having to spoil it uh, the next one really really pains me that it's on this list like it hurts my heart a lot uh this is probably my most disappointing rate of 2021 uh just because of how much i thought that i was going to love it uh it's anxious people by frederick Bachman. the reason that i thought that i was going to love this so much was because in 2020 my favorite book of the year was bear town by frederick Bachman. so when i heard the pitch of this book, which is basically a bank robbery gone wrong, an attempted bank robbery turns into like a hostage situation where the bank robber is holding up this open house. So it's all these strangers kind of stuck together in this high pressure locked room scenario situation. And just that pitch alone is enough to make me think that I'm going to love that book. But then when I heard that Frederick Backman wrote it, I was like, this is going to be it like this is going to be a favorite of the year and it was the opposite i think that my fatal flaw was that i went in expecting the intensity the intense tone that bear town had and i did not get that tone at all you can definitely tell that frederick backman wrote anxious people it's very much in his style and he does do an excellent job of a, like the structure of the story itself. It's similar to Bear Town in that we're getting all these disparate sort of pieces of these character storylines and then they all kind of come together and make sense in the end. That part was done well, but the tone was just so slapsticky and humorous. It felt like the end of every single sentence could have ended with like a but um and it grated my nerves so much so the tone was not it for me and then also one of the main reasons the main reason why i loved bear town was because i was so invested in every single character from that book so i was expecting the same thing to happen with anxious people especially because it's such a large cast and i could not have cared less about a single one of those characters and their issues and their storylines and the problems that were going on in their life. Even I remember halfway through my reading experience trying to check in with myself and saying like, Caroline, just find one character that you like. Find one character that you can get invested in. And it just was not, it was not it for me. So I feel like that combined with the fact that the tone was just very off putting and not what I was expecting um is the reason that i i was really disappointed in this one next up we have a disappointing read that even though i was disappointed by it i was actually really glad that i read it because it made me learn more about myself and my reading preferences i guess uh the book is ace of spades by farida ibike iamede this is a young adult mystery thriller and uh, i don't tend to love any mystery thrillers but i really thought that this was going to be one that i was going to love uh just because the pitch for it sounded so good and honestly i was i was in love with the cover as well so the pitch for this one is uh, we're focusing on two characters that are the only black students at this very like elite and prestigious uh preparatory school that's predominantly white and uh, the plot kind of kicks off when uh, these anonymous texts start going out that are revealing very private secrets about these two black students private lives and it's very much like they're being targeted so they eventually have to come together and try to solve what's going on with this and part of the way that this was pitched was that it was going to be very gossip girl-esque and i am going to be honest i'm always chasing the high that was the cw you know show gossip girl i loved that show so desperately and that's what i thought we were going to get Shiamaka, she's uh one of the main characters and i thought we were going to get like a blair waldorf storyline with her where we were going to get to see her at these like 
lavish elite parties and just people kowtowing to her for like no reason at all and we kind of get that at the beginning but then as the story goes on it very quickly just becomes her being lied to and like gaslit by her friends and I really didn't like reading about that at all. And then I guess my main point, which is the reason why I'm glad that I read this book in the first place, because I learned about myself that my favorite part of mystery thrillers is the part where just no one knows what the heck is going on. Like all of these mysterious things keep happening and the main characters are just in the dark and have absolutely no clue what's happening. I loved that part, which was essentially the first half of this book. I ate it up. I flew through it so quickly. I thought that it was so well written. Uh, both of the main characters kind of have these gaps in their memory, and I just thought that the author did such a great job uh, with that and creating tension with that. I learned that my least favorite part of mystery thrillers is when people actually start trying to solve the mystery. There's something about like following people trying to plan and plot and like we're gonna meet here and then we're gonna plan this and then we're gonna run here and we're gonna meet here at this time. And so halfway through the book that's kind of what we see. We see Devon and Chiamaka come together and team up and try and unravel the mystery as to who could be behind these anonymous text messages. And I just, I learned about myself that that's not what I like following in a book, which is not any fault of the author or the book that that's the direction that it took. It's 1000% on me that that's a preference that I didn't know that I had until I guess reading it in this book. So Again, I'm grateful that I read this. It's just, I really thought that I was going to love it as much as everyone else seems to love it, and I didn't. Okay, and we have reached the final book on my most disappointing books of 2021, which is good for me because I really don't like talking about books that I don't like. With this one though, I was so excited for it and thought that I was going to love it because when I heard what it was about. It sounded like it had so many elements of what I love to read about. The book is The Kids Are Gonna Ask by Gretchen Anthony. And really what we're focusing on is a whole cast of characters, which is something that I love. Uh, there's two teenagers, they're twins, that lost their mom when they were really young. Uh, and she kind of took with her to her grave who their biological father was so they don't know who their biological father is and through a series of a couple different events they decide to launch this podcast that is essentially chronicling their search for their birth father again this has so many elements that i thought i was set up to love like alternating perspective family dynamics a podcast sort of investigative element and the book followed through on all of those things. It just didn't do any of them well. Like I found myself thinking throughout this book, I wish that I had this idea. I wish that I wrote this book because I feel like I could have done it better. I 1000% couldn't have, I'm not a writer, but I was just so detached to everything that was happening in this book. I think that one of the reasons why that might have been the case was because the two main teenagers, the way that they spoke and interacted with each other and everyone else, it was, you could tell that it, was very much written by an author that was writing the way that she thought teenagers talked today. So they had very much like 90s sitcom brother sister banter and it was just not, I didn't like reading that at all. I am remembering now that I halfway through my reading experience thought to look up the audiobook because I was like, okay, you know, multiple perspectives, a podcast, like this has all the makings of a really great audiobook. Um, and I wish that I could tell you to pick up the audiobook, but I can't because the audiobook was a letdown too. Uh, there wasn't a full cast of characters. It was the same narrator throughout. And then they really, I feel like, missed out on so many cool production opportunities with the podcast element. Uh, again, it was just the same narrator and they didn't do any kind of cool production things to even let you know that it was a podcast. I feel like if I didn't have the physical book, 
I wouldn't even know that there was excerpts from the podcast in the book. Even with the podcast and the way that it was included in the book, I feel like I wanted more from that. We got beginning script podcast snippets of like beginnings of episodes, but I was looking for like full pages of episodes. I think that it would have made, I think that it would have made the book flow more seamlessly and it was just a missed opportunity. So, so much potential and yet so much let down. Okay, that's it. We got to the end. I did it. I made it through. Those were my most disappointing reads of 2021. And now that that's out of the way, I can move on to videos that I am excited about, like my best books of 2021. If you stuck around, especially through all of those spoilery parts, whether you fast forwarded through or just watched them, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you are having an excellent day and I will see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye.